think, really, Dinah ought to have taught you better manners. You ought, Dinah, you know you ought. Daddy, can you play chess? Now, don't smile. I'm asking it seriously. Let's pretend that you're the Red Queen. Do you know, I think that if you sat up and folded your arms, you'd look exactly like her. Look, don't sulk. It's easy. And if you're not good directly, I'll put you through into a looking glass house. How would you like that? Can I tell you my ideas about looking glass house? First, there's the room we can see through the glass. That's just the same as our drawing room. Only the things go the other way. Oh, Kitty, how nice it would be if only we could get through into Looking Glass House. I'm sure it's got beautiful things in it. They see me through the glass in here and can't get at me. <laughs> they don't keep this room so tidy as the other. They can hear me, and I'm really sure they can't see me. I feel somehow as if I were invisible. It is the voice of my child, precious Lily, Imperial Kitten. You little fiddlestick! I will be hours and hours getting to the table at that rate. Mind the volcano. What volcano? Blew me up. Mind you come up the regular way. Oh dear. Water. That's what we want. Water. Well, it's wet anyway. I assure you, my dear, I turn cold to the very ends of my whiskers. But you haven't got any whiskers. The horror of that moment. I shall never, never forget. You will, though, if you don't make a memorandum of it. A good idea. My dear, I really must get a thinner pencil. I, I can't manage this one a bit. It, it, it writes all manner of things I don't intend. What manner of things? The white knight is sliding down the poker. He balances very badly. But that isn't a memorandum of your feelings at all. Well, I did tell you, my dear. Oh, no, no. It's all in some language I don't know. But of course. Jabberwocky. Twas brillig and the slithy toes did garring gimble in the wabe. All mimsy were the borogoves and the mome raths outgrabe. Beware the jabberwock, my son, jaws that bite, claws that catch. Somebody killed something. That's clear at any rate. Toad, if I don't make haste, I shall have to go back through the looking glass before I've seen what the rest of the house is like. garden far better from the top of that hill.
Oh, no. talking about it. I'm not going back again yet. Oh, Tiger Lily, I wish you could talk. We can talk, if there's anybody worth talking to. Can all the flowers talk? As well as you can, and a great deal louder. I was wondering when you'd speak, said I to myself. Her face has got some sense in it, though it's not a clever one. If only her petals curled up a little more, she'd be all right. Aren't you sometimes frightened at being planted out here with nobody to take care of you? There's the tree in the middle. What else is it good for? But what could it do if any danger came? It could bark. It says Bow Wow. That's why its branches are called Bow. Didn't you know that? Silence! Every one of you! They know I can't get that, the they wouldn't dare to do it. Never mind. If you don't hold your tongues, I'll pick you. That's right. The daisies are worst of all. When one speaks, they all begin together. And it's enough to make one wither to hear the way they carry on. How is it you can all talk so nicely? Feel the ground. Then you'll know why. It's very hard. In most gardens, they make the beds too soft, so that the flowers are always asleep. I never thought of that before. It's my opinion you never think at all. Are there any more people in the garden besides me? There's one other flower that can move about like you. I wonder how you do it. You're always wondering. Is she like me? Well, she has the same awkward shape as you. But she's redder, and her petals are shorter, I think. They're done up close, like a dahlia, not tumbled about like yours. But that's not your fault. You're beginning to fade, you know. She's coming. I hear her footsteps thump, thump along the gravel walk. She's grown a good deal. It's the fresh air that does it. Wonderfully fine air it is out here. I think I'll go and meet her. Oh, you can't possibly do that. I should advise you to walk the other way. come from and where are you going look up speak nicely and don't twiddle your fingers all the time I'm afraid I lost my way rather I don't know what you mean by your way all the ways around here belong to me but why did you come here at all curtsy while you're thinking what to say it saves time it's time for you to answer now open your mouth a little wider when you speak and always say your majesty I only wanted to see what the garden was like your majesty that's right though when you say garden I've seen gardens compared with which this would be a wilderness. And I thought I'd try and find my way to the top of that hill. When you say hill, I could show you hills in comparison with which you call that a valley. No, I shouldn't. A hill can't be a valley, you know. That would be nonsense. You may call it nonsense if you like, but I've heard nonsense compared with which that would be as sensible as a dictionary. So, you want to find my way to the top of that hill, do you? Yes, Your Majesty. Come along, then. But... Uh... I should like to be a queen best. That's easily managed. You can be the white queen's pawn, if you like, as Lily's too young to play. And you're in the second square to begin with. When you reach the eighth square, you'll be a queen. Come along. Faster. Faster. Oh, things moving along with us. Faster. Don't 
don't try to talk. Faster! Faster! Are we nearly there? Nearly there? Why, we passed it ages ago. Faster! Faster! a little now. Why, I do believe we've been under this tree the whole time. Everything's just as it was. Of course it is. What else would you have it? Well, in our country, you generally get somewhere else. If you ran very fast for a long time, as we've been doing. A slow sort of country. Now, here, you see, it takes all the running you can do to stay in the same place. If you want to get somewhere else, you must run at least twice as fast as that. Oh, I'd rather not try, please. I'm quite content to stay here. Only I am so hot and thirsty. I know what you'd like. Have a biscuit. While you're refreshing yourself, I'll just take the measurements. <coughs> At the end of two yards, I shall give you your directions. Have another biscuit. Oh, no, thank you. One's quite enough. First quenched, I hope. At the end of three yards, I shall repeat them for fear of your forgetting them. At the end of four, I shall say goodbye. And at the end of five, I shall go. A pawn goes two squares in its first move, you know, so you'll go very quickly through to the third square, by railway, I should think, and you'll find yourself in the fourth square in no time. Well, that square belongs to Tweedledum and Tweedledee. The fifth is mostly water. The sixth belongs to Humpty Dumpty. But you make no remark. I didn't know I had to make one just then. You should have said it's extremely kind of you to tell me all this. However, we'll suppose it's said. The seventh square is mostly forest. However, one of the knights will show you the way, and in the eighth square we shall be queens together, and it's all feasting and fun. Speak in French when you can't think of the English for a thing. Turn out your toes as you walk, and remember who you are. Goodbye. So, I'm a pawn. I'd better make a move. Tickets, please. Ah! <laughs> now, then, show your ticket, child. Don't, Don't keep, keep him waiting, waiting, child. child. Why, his time is worth a thousand pounds a minute. I'm afraid I haven't got one. There wasn't a ticket office where I came from. There wasn't room for one where she came from. The land there is worth a thousand pounds a minute. Don't make excuses. You should have brought one from the engine driver. The man that drives the engine. Why, the smoke alone is worth a thousand pounds a puff. Oh, there's no use in speaking, then. Better say nothing at all. Language is worth a thousand pounds a word. I shall dream about a thousand pounds tonight. I know I shall. You're travelling the wrong way. So young a child ought to know which way she's going, even if she doesn't know her own name. She ought to know her way to the ticket office, even if she doesn't know her alphabet. She'll have to go back from here this luggage. Change <laughs> It sounds like a horse. You might make a joke on that. Something about... Horse and horse, you know. <laughs> she must be labelled last with care, you know. She must be sent as a message by the telegraph. She must draw the train herself the rest of the way. Pay no attention to what they say, my dear. Just take a return ticket every time the train stops. Indeed I shan't. I don't belong to this railway journey at all. I was in a wood just now and wish I could get back there. You might make a joke on that. Something about... You would if you could, you know. Don't tease her, whatever you are. If you're so anxious to have a joke made, why don't you make one yourself? Oh, I know you're a friend, an old friend and a dear friend, and you won't hurt me even though I am an insect. What kind of an insect? What? Then you don't... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's, it's only a brook we have to jump over. Oh. <laughs> Still, it will take us into the fourth square. That's some comfort. <laughs> Send 
you don't like all insects. I like them when they can talk. And I've never talked where I come from. What sort of insects do you rejoice in where you come from? I don't rejoice in insects at all. But I can tell you the names of some of them. Of course, they answer to their names. I never knew them to do it. What's the use of their having names if they won't answer to them? No use to them. But it's useful to the people that name them, I suppose. If not, why do things have names at all? Huh? Well, I can't say. Go on with the names of your insects. You're wasting time. Well, there's the horsefly. Look there. Whatever's that? That is a rocking horsefly. It's made entirely of wood. What does it live on? Sap and sawdust. Go on with your list. And there's the dragonfly. Look on the branch above your head. And there you will see a snap dragonfly. Its body is made of plum pudding, its wings are of, are of holly leaves, and its head is a raisin burning in brandy. And what does it live on? Frumenty and mince pies, and it makes its nest in a Christmas box. Go on. And there's that butterfly. Crawling at your feet, you may observe a bread and butterfly. Its wings are made of thin slices of bread and butter. Its body is a crust and its head is a lump of sugar. And what does it live on? Weak tea with cream in it. Supposing it couldn't find any? Then it would die, of course. But that must happen very often. It always happens. <laughs> I, I suppose you don't want to lose your name. No, indeed. Oh, I don't know. Think how convenient it would be if you could manage to go home without it. For instance, if the governess wanted to call you to your lessons, she'd call out, Come here! Um, um, uh, but there wouldn't be any name for her to call, and you wouldn't have to go. If she couldn't remember my name, she'd call me Miss, as the servants do. Well, <laughs> if she said Miss and didn't say anything more, you'd miss your lessons. <laughs> That's a joke. I wish you had made it. Why do you wish I had made it? It's a very bad one. You shouldn't make jokes if it makes you so unhappy. Agreed to have a battle. For Tweedledum said Tweedledee had spoiled his nice new rattle. Just then flew down a monstrous crow as black as a tar barrel. And frightened both the heroes so they quite forgot their quarrel. I do believe they live in the same house. I'll just call and say, How do you do? and ask them the way out of the wood. I suppose they've each got Tweedle around the back of the collar. If you think we're waxworks, you ought to pay, you know. Waxworks weren't made to be looked at for nothing. No how. Contrary-wise, if you think we're alive, you ought to speak. I'm sure I'm very sorry. Would you tell me, please, which is the best way out of this wood? It's getting so dark. <laughs> First boy. No how. Next boy. Contrary-wise, you've begun wrong. The first thing in a visit is to say, how do you do, and shake hands. <laughs> Here we go round the mulberry bush, the mulberry bush, the mulberry bush. Here we go round the mulberry bush, the cold and frosty morning. Here we go round the mulberry bush, four times round. <sighs> is enough for one dance. <sighs> I hope you're not too much tired. No, how? <sighs> and thank you very much for asking. So much obliged. <sighs> you like poetry? Yes, pretty well, some poetry. Would you tell me which road leads out of the wood? What shall we repeat to her? The walrus and the carpenter is the longest. <laughs> the sun was shining it's on the... very long. Would you please tell me first which road? 
The sun was shining on the sea, shining with all his might. He did his very best to make the billows smooth and bright. And this was odd because it was the middle of the night. The moon was shining sulkily because she thought the sun had got no business to be there after the day was done. It's very rude of him, she said, to come and spoil the fun. The walrus and the carpenter were walking close at hand. They wept like anything to see such quantities of sand. If this were only cleared away, they said, it would be grand. If seven maids with seven mops swept it for half a year, do you suppose, the walrus said, that they could get it clear? I doubt it, said the carpenter, and shed a bitter tear. Oh, oysters, come and walk with us, the walrus did beseech. A pleasant walk, a pleasant talk along the briny beach. We cannot do with more than four to give a hand to each. Four young oysters hurried up, all eager for the treat. Their coats were brushed, their faces washed, their shoes were clean and neat. And this was odd, because, you know, they hadn't any feet. Four other oysters followed them, and yet another four. And thick and fast they came at last, and more, and more, and more. All hopping through the frothy waves, and scrambling to the shore. The walrus and the carpenter walked on a mile or so. And then they rested on a rock conveniently low. And all the little oysters stood, and waited in a row. The time has come, the walrus said, to talk of many things, of shoes and ships and sealing wax, of cabbages and kings, and why the sea is boiling hot and whether pigs have wings. But wait a minute, the oysters cried. But before we have our chat, for some of us are and no hurry, said the carpenter. They thanked him much for that. A loaf of bread, the walrus said, is what we chiefly need. Pepper, vinegar besides are very good indeed. Now, if you're ready, oysters, dear, we can begin to feed. Not on us, the oysters cried, turning a little blue. After such kindness, that would be a big Night is fine, the walrus said. Do you admire the view? It was so kind of you to come. You are very nice. The carpenter said nothing but... Cut us another slice. I wish you were not quite so deaf. I meant to ask you twice. It seems a shame, the walrus said, to play them such a trick. After we brought them out so far and made them trot so quick. The carpenter said nothing but... The butter's spread too thick. I weep for you, the walrus said. I deeply sympathize. With sobs and tears, he sorted out those of the largest size, holding his pocket handkerchief before his streaming eyes. Oh, oysters, said the carpenter. You've had a pleasant run. Shall we be trotting home again? But answer came there none. And this was scarcely odd. Because... They'd eaten everyone. <laughs> I liked the walrus best because he was a little sorry for the poor oysters. Yep, yeah, more than the carpenter, though. You see, he held his handkerchief in front so the carpenter couldn't count how many he took, contrary-wise. That was mean. Then I liked the carpenter best if he didn't eat as many as the walrus. But yet as many as he could get. Well, they were both very unpleasant characters. Lions or tigers about here. It's only the Red King snoring. Come and look at him. Isn't he a lovely sight? Fit the snorey's head off. He's dreaming now. And what do you think he's dreaming about? Nobody can guess that. Why, about you? <laughs> and if he left off dreaming about you. Where do you suppose you'd be? Where I am now, of course. Not you. You'd be nowhere. Why, you're only a sort of thing in his dream. If that there king were to wake, you'd go out bang, just like a candle. I shouldn't. Besides, if I'm an only sort of thing in his dream, what are you, I should like to know? Ditto! Ditto, ditto! Hush! You'll be waking him if you make so much noise. Ah! Well, it's no use your talking about waking when you're only one of the things in his dream. You know very well you're not real. Ooh. I'd better be getting out of the wood, for really it's coming on very dark. Do you think it's going to rain? No, I don't think it is. At least, 
Not under here. <laughs> no how. Do you see that? It's only a rattle, not a rattlesnake, you know. Only an old rattle, quite old and broken. But it isn't old. It's new, I tell you. I bought it yesterday. My nice new rattle. Of course, you agree to have a battle. I suppose so. Only she must help to dress us up, you know. Wait, Wait there. there. I hope you're a good hand at pinning and tying strings. It's to keep my head from being cut off. You know, it's one of the most serious things that can possibly happen to one in a battle. To get one's head cut off. Tie my helmet on. Please. Do I look very pale? Well, yes, a little. Well, I'm very brave, generally. Only today, I happen to have a headache. And I got a toothache. I'm far worse than you. Then you'd better not fight today. We must have a bit of a fight. But I don't care about it going on long. What's the time now? Half past four. Let's fight till six and then have dinner. <sighs> Very well. And she can watch us. And you better not come very close. I generally hit everything I can see when I get really excited. And I hit everything within reach, whether I can see it or not. You must hit the trees pretty often, I should think. There's supposed to be a tree left standing for ever so far around by the time we've finished. And all about a rattle. I wouldn't have minded it so much if it hadn't been a new one. I wish the monstrous crow would come. There's only one sword, you know. But you can have the umbrella. It's quite as sharp. Oh, we must begin quick. It's getting as dark as it can. And darker. What a thick black cloud that is. And how fast it comes. Why, I do believe it's got wings. It's a crow! Ah! 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 to be in the way. Am I addressing the White Queen? Well, yes, if you call this addressing. It isn't my notion of the thing at all. I have been addressing myself for the last two hours. It's out of temper, I think. I've pinned it here and I've pinned it there, but there's no pleasing it. It can't go straight, you know, if you pin it all on one side. Really, we should have a lady's maid. Well, I'm sure I'll take you with pleasure. Toppence a week and jam every other day. I don't want you to hire me, and I don't care for jam. It's very good jam. Well, I don't want any today at any rate. Oh, you couldn't have it if you did want it. The rule is jam tomorrow and jam yesterday, but never jam today. It must come sometimes to jam today. No, it can't. It's jam every other day. Today isn't any other day, you know. I don't understand. It's dreadfully confusing. Oh, that's the effect of living backwards. It does make one a little giddy at first. Living backwards? But there's one great advantage to it, that one's memory works both ways. Mine only works one way. I can't remember things before they happen. Oh, it's a poor sort of memory that only works backwards. My finger's bleeding. Ooh, Have ooh, you pricked ooh. your finger? No, I haven't pricked it yet, but I soon shall. Ooh, when ooh, do you expect ooh, to do ooh. it? Uh, the next time that I come to fasten my shawl. Ooh, 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 ooh. Uh, the brooch will come undone directly. Ooh, 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 Take ooh, care! <sighs> That's the cause of the bleeding, you see. Now you understand how things happen here. But why don't you scream now? Why? Oh, I've, I've done the screaming already. What would be the good of doing it all over again? Oh! I 
I've got it. I've got it. Now I shall put it on all by myself. Then I hope your finger is better now. Oh, much better. Much better. 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 What do you want to buy? I don't quite know yet. I should like to look all round me first, if I might. You may look in front of you and on both sides if you like, but you can't look all round unless you've got eyes at the back of your head. <laughs> Are you a child or a teetotum? You make me giddy unless you stop turning round like that. Things flow about so here. Can you row? Well, yes, a little. Not on land. And not with needles. Feather! 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 You'll be catching a crab directly. I should like that. Didn't you hear me say feather? Indeed I did. You said it very often and very loud. Please, where are the crabs? In the water. Feather, I say. Why do you say feather so often? I'm not a bird. Oh, yes, you are. You're a little goose. <laughs> that was a nice crab you caught. Was it? I didn't see it. Are there many crabs here? Crabs and all sorts of things. Plenty of choice, only make up your mind. Now, what do you want to buy? I should like to buy, buy an egg, please. How do you sell them? Five per farthing for one, cuttings for two. Then two are cheaper than one. But you must eat them both if you buy two. Oh, then I'll have one, please. You never put things into people's hands. That would never do. You'll have to get it for yourself. <laughs> shop I ever saw. And here's another brook. So now I must be in the sixth square. And of course, that must be Humpty Dumpty. It can't be anybody else. And how exactly like an egg he is. It is very provoking to be called an egg. Very. I said you look like an egg, sir. Some eggs are very pretty, you know. Some people have no more sense than a baby. Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. Don't stand there chattering to yourself. Tell me your name and your business. My name is Alice. That's a stupid name enough. What does it mean? Must a name mean something? Of course it must. My name means the shape I am. Look what handsome shape it is, too. With a name like yours, you could be any shape. Almost. Why do you sit out here all alone? Well, because there's nobody with me. Did you think I didn't know the answer to that? Ask another. Don't you think you'd be safer down on the ground? What tremendously easy riddles you ask. Of course I don't think so. And if ever I did fall off, which there's no chance of, but if I did, if I did fall, the king has promised me Oh, you may turn pale if you like. You didn't think I was going to say that, did you? The king has promised me, with his very own mouth... ...to send all his horses and all his men to put you in your place again. No, oh, I declare! That's too bad! You've been lifting at doors and down chimneys and behind trees, or you couldn't have known it! Indeed I haven't. It's in a book. Oh, well. They may have put such things in a book. That's what we call the history of England, that is. Now, take a good look at me. I am one who has spoken to a king, I am. But mayhap you may never see such another. And to show you I'm not proud, you may shake hands with me. What a beautiful belt you've got on. At least a beautiful cravat, I should have said. No, no, a belt, I mean. I beg your pardon. There's a most provoking thing! 
Well, a person doesn't know the difference between a cravat and a belt. I know. It's very ignorant of me. Oh, well. It's a cravat, my child. And a very beautiful one, as you say. It was a present from the White King and Queen. There now. Is it really? They gave it to me as an unbirthday present. I beg your pardon? I'm not offended. I mean, what is an unbirthday present? A present given when it isn't your birthday, of course. I like birthday presents best. You don't know what you're talking about. How many days are there in a year? 365. And how many birthdays do you have? One. And if you take one from 365, what remains? 364, of course. I'd rather see that done on paper. That seems to be done right. You're holding it upside down. <laughs> to be sure I was. I thought it looked a little queer. As I say, that seems to be done right, though I haven't time to look it over thoroughly just now. And that shows there are 364 days when you might get an unbirthday present. Certainly. And only one for birthday presents, you know. There's glory for you. I don't know what you mean by glory. Of course you don't, till I tell you. I meant there's a nice knockdown argument for you. But glory doesn't mean a nice knockdown argument. When I use a word, it means what I choose it to mean, neither more nor less. The question is whether you can make words mean so many different things. The question is, which is to be master, that's all. Impenetrability, that's what I say. Would you tell me, please, what that means? No, well, you talk like a reasonable child. I meant by impenetrability that we've had enough of that subject, and it might be as well if you'd mention what you mean to do next, as I don't suppose you mean to stop here all the rest of your life. You seem very clever at explaining words, sir. Would you kindly tell me the meaning of the poem called Jabberwocky? Let's hear it. I can explain every poem that was ever invented and some that haven't been invented just yet. Twas brillig and the slithy toves did gar and gimble in the wabe. Or mimsy were the borogoves and the mome wraths outgrabe. Beware the Jabberwock, my son. The jaws that bite, the claws that catch. Beware the Jubjub bird. Shun the plumious bandersnatch. He took his vorpal sword in hand. Long time the manxome foe he sought. So rested he by the tum tum tree and stood a while in thought. And as in uffish thought he stood, the jabberwock with eyes of flame came whiffling through the tulgy wood and burbled as it came. One, two, one, two, and through and through, the vorpal blade went snick a snap. left it dead, and with its head, he went galumphing back. And hast thou slain the Jabberwock? Come to my arms, my beamish boy! Oh, frabjous day! Kaloo, kaloo! He chortled in his joy. Twas brillig, and the slithy toes did gar and gimble in the wabe. Or mimsy were the borogoves, and the mome wraths outgrabe. Plenty of hard words there. Brillig means four o'clock in the afternoon, the time when you begin broiling things for dinner. That'll do very well. And slithy? A slithy means lithe and slimy. It's like a portmanteau, two meanings packed up in one word. I see. And what are toves? Toves are something like badgers. They're something like lizards. And they're something like corkscrews. They must be very curious-looking creatures. They are that. Also, they build their nests under sundials. Also, they live on cheese. 
I want to gyre and to gimble. To gyre is to go round and round, like a gyroscope, and to gimble is to make holes like a gimlet. And the wave is the grass plot round a sundial, I suppose. Of course it is. It's called a wave because it goes a long way before it and a long way behind it. And a long way beyond it on each side. Exactly so. But who's been repeating all that hard stuff to you? I read it in a book, but I had some poetry repeated to me much easier than that by Tweedledum and Tweedledee. <laughs> as to poetry, I can repeat poetry as well as other folk if it comes to that. Oh, it needn't come to that. The piece I'm going to repeat was written entirely for your amusement. Thank you. <laughs> I sent a message to the fish. I told them, this is what I wish. The little fish's answer was, we cannot do it, sir, because... I'm afraid I don't quite understand. It gets easier further on. <clears throat> I told them once, I told them twice. They would not listen to advice. I took a kettle, large and new, fit for the deed I had to do. I, my heart went hop, my heart went thump. I filled the kettle at the pump. Then someone came to me and said, the little fishes are in bed. I said to him, I said it plain, then you must wake them up again. I said it very loud and clear. I went and shouted in his ear. I wouldn't have been that messenger for anything. But he was very stiff and proud. He said, you needn't shout so loud. And he was very proud and stiff. He said, you'll go and wake them if... I took a corkscrew from the shelf. I went to wake them up myself. And when I found the door was locked, I pulled and pushed and kicked and knocked. And when I found the door was shut, I tried to turn the handle, but... Is that all? That's all. Goodbye. Goodbye. Till we meet again. Of all the unsatisfactory, of all the unsatisfactory people I ever met... <laughs> Did you happen to meet any soldiers, my dear, as you came through the wood? Yes, I did. Several thousand, I should think. 4,207. That's the exact number. I, I couldn't send all the horses, you know, because two of them are wanted in the game. And I haven't sent the two messengers either. They've both gone to the town. Um, uh, just look along the road and tell me if you can see either of them. I see nobody on the road. Oh, I only wish I had such eyes. To be able to see nobody. And at that distance, too. Quite as much as I can do to see real people by this light. I see somebody now, but he's coming very slowly. And what curious attitudes he goes into. Not at all. He's an Anglo-Saxon messenger. And those are Anglo-Saxon attitudes. He only does them when he's happy. His name is Hare. I love my love with an H because he is happy. I hate him with an H because he is hideous. I fed him with ham sandwiches and hay. His name is Hare. And he lives... He lives on the hill. The other messenger's called Hatter. I must have two, you know, to come and go. One to come and one to go. I beg your pardon? It isn't respectable to beg. I only meant that I didn't understand. Why one to come and one to go? Well, don't I tell you, I must have two. To fetch and carry. One to fetch and one to carry. This young lady loves you with an H. You alarm me. I, I feel faint. Give me a ham sandwich. <laughs> An another sandwich. There's only hay left now. <laughs> hay, then. Oh, there's nothing like eating hay when you're faint. I should think throwing cold water over you would be better, or some sal volatile. I didn't say it was nothing better. I said it was nothing like it. Who did you pass on the road? Nobody. Quite right. This young lady saw him too. Nobody walks slower than you. I do my best. 
I'm sure nobody walks much faster than I do. We can't do that or else we'd have been here first. And now you've got your breath, you may tell us what's happened in the town. I'll whisper it. They're at it again! You call that a whisper? If you do such a thing again, I'll have you buttered. Went through and through my head, like an earthquake. Who are at it again? Why, the lion and the unicorn, of course. Fighting for the crown? Yes, to be sure. And the best of the joke is that it's my crown all the while. <laughs> Let's run and see them. The lion and the unicorn were fighting for the crown. The lion beat the unicorn all around the town. Some gave them white bread, some gave them brown. Some gave them plum cake and drummed them out of town. Does the one that wins get the crown? Dear me, no. What an idea. Would you be good enough to stop a minute? I'm good enough, only I'm not strong enough. A minute goes by so fearfully quick. You might as well try to stop a bandersnatch. There's my other Anglo-Saxon messenger. His name is Hatter. Uh, he's only just out of prison and he hadn't finished his tea when he was sent in. Mm. How are you, dear child? Mm. Were you happy in prison, dear child? Oh. Speak, won't you? <laughs> How are they getting on with the fight? They're getting on very well. Each of them has been down about 87 times. And I suppose they'll soon bring the white bread and the brown. It's waiting for them now. This is a bit of it as I'm eating. Ten minutes allowed for refreshments. I don't think they'll fight any more today. Go and order the drums to begin. I had the best of it this time. A, a, a little, a little, but oh. you, um, you, you shouldn't have run him through with your horn, you know. It didn't hurt him. What is this? This is a child. Uh -uh. Mm, we only found it today. It's as large as life and twice as natural. I always thought they were fabulous monsters. Is it alive? It can talk. Uh, talk, child. Do you know, I always thought unicorns were fabulous monsters, too. Huh? I never saw one alive before. Well, now that we have seen each other, if you'll believe in me, I'll believe in you. Is that a bargain? Yes, if you like. Huh. Come, fetch out the plum cake, old man. None of your brown bread for me. Well, certainly, certainly. Open the bag, quick. Mm. What's this? Ah, what is it now? You'll never guess, I couldn't. <sighs> it's a fabulous monster. Oh. Then hand round the plum cake monster and sit down. Fair play with the cake. What a fight we might have for the crown now. I should win easy. I'm not so sure about that. Why, I chased you all round the town, you uh, chicken. Mm. <laughs> all round the town? Well, that's a good long way. Did, did, did you go by the old bridge or the marketplace? You, you, you get the best view by the old bridge. Oh, I'm sure I don't know. What a time the monster is cutting up that Cake. It's very provoking. I've cut several slices already, but they always join on again. You don't know how to manage looking glass cake. Hand it round fast and cut it afterwards. Now cut it up. I say, this isn't fair. The monster's given the lion twice as much as me. Well, she's left none for herself, anyhow. Do you like plum cake, monster? If that doesn't drum them out of town, nothing ever will. didn't dream it, for there's the plate. And I've crossed another brook. So now I must be in the seventh square. So? Ahoy, ahoy, 
Now you're my prisoner. I can't be. Why can't you be? Because I'm a white pawn, and I want to be a queen. Oh, and so you will. When you've crossed the next brook, I'll see you safe to the end of the wood, and then I must uh, go back, you know. That's the end of my move. Thank you very much. I see you're admiring my little box. It's my own invention for keeping clothes and sandwiches in. You see, I carry it upside down so that the rain can't get in. But the things can get out. Did you know the lid's open? I didn't know it. Then all the things must have fallen out. Well, the box is no use without them. Can you guess why I did that? In the hopes some bees will build a nest in it. Then I should get the honey. But you've got a beehive, or something like one, fastened to the saddle. Yes, it's, it's a very good beehive, one of the best kind. But not a single bee has come near it yet. And the other thing is a mouse trap. I suppose the mice keep the bees out, or the bees keep the mice out. I don't know which. I was wondering what the mouse trap was for. It isn't very likely there will be any mice on a horse's back. Not very likely, perhaps, but it's as well to be prepared for everything. That's the reason the horse has all those aglets round his feet. What are they for? To guard against the bites of sharks. It's uh, an invention of my own. Now, help me on. I'll go with you to the end of the wood. Oh, I hope you've got your hair well fastened on. Only the usual way. That's hard enough, you see. The wind is so very strong here, it's as strong as soup. Have you invented a plan for keeping your hair from being blown off? Not yet. But I have a plan for keeping it from falling off. I should like to hear it very much. <laughs> you take an upright stick. Then you make your hair climb up it, like a fruit tree. Now, the reason hair falls off is because it hangs down. Nothing falls upwards, you know. <laughs> it's a plan of my own invention. You may try it, if you like. I'm afraid you haven't had much practice in riding. What made you say that? Because people don't fall off quite as often when they've had much practice. I've had plenty of practice. Plenty of practice. Oh. Here, the Greek art of riding, as I would say, is to... Oh. I hope no bones are broken. None to speak of. Mm. Plenty of practice. Plenty of practice. Now, as I was saying, the great art of writing is to keep one's balance proper. Like this, you know. Uh, uh, mm. uh, uh, uh. Plenty of practice. Plenty of practice. What a curious helmet you've got. Is that your own invention too? Oh, yes, but I invented a much better one than that. Uh, like a... like a, a sugar loaf. There was always the danger of falling into it, to be sure. It took hours and hours to get me out. I was as fast as the uh, 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 lightning, you know. How can you go on talking so quietly, head downwards? What does it matter where my body happens to be? My mind goes on working all the same. In fact, the more head downwards I am, the more I keep inventing new things. One of the cleverest things of the sort I ever did was inventing a new pudding during the meat course. In time to have it cooked for the next course. Well, that was quick work, certainly. Well, not the next course, no. Certainly not the next course. Then it would have to be the next day. We wouldn't have two pudding courses in one dinner. Well, not the next day. No, certainly not the next day. In, in fact, I don't believe that pudding ever was cooked. In fact, I don't believe that pudding ever will be cooked. But it was a very clever pudding to invent. What did you mean it to be made of? It began with blotting paper. That would be very nice, I'm afraid. 
not very nice alone. But you've no idea what a difference it makes mixing it with other things, such as gunpowder and sealing wax. And now I must leave you. Uh -huh. Ah, you are sad. Let me sing you a song to comfort you. Is it very long? It's long, but it's very, very beautiful. Everybody that hears me sing it, either it brings the tears into their eyes or else... Or else what? Or else it doesn't, you know. The name of the song is called Haddock's Eyes. Oh, that's the name of the song, is it? No, you don't understand. That's what the name is called. The name is The Aged, Aged Man. Then I ought to have said that's what the song is called. No, you oughtn't. That's quite another thing. The song is called Ways and Means, but that's only what it's called, you know. Well, what is the song, then? I was coming to that. The song really is a sitting on a gate. And the tune's my own invention. But, of course, I shan't sing it. I'll tell thee everything I can. There's little to relate. I saw an aged, aged man a sitting on a gate. Who are you, aged man, I said, and how is it you live? And his answer trickled through my head like water through a sieve. He said, I look for butterflies that sleep among the wheat. I make them into mutton pies and sell them in the street. I sell them unto men, he said, who sail on stormy seas. And that's the way I get my bread. A trifle, if you please. But I was thinking of a plan to dye one's whiskers green and always use so large a fan that they could not be seen. So, having no reply to give to what the old man said, I cried, Come tell me how you live! and thumped him on the head. He said, I hunt for headaches eyes among the heather bright and work them into waistcoat buttons in the silent night. And these I do not sell for gold or coins of silvery shine, but for a copper apney, and that'll purchase nine. But I was thinking of a way to feed oneself on batter, and so go on from day to day getting a little fatter. I shook him well from side to side until his face was blue. Come tell me how you live, I cried, and what it is you do. I sometimes dig for buttered rolls or set lime twigs for crabs. I sometimes search the grassy knolls for wheels of handsome cabs. And that's the way, he gave a wink, by which I get my wealth. And very gladly will I drink your honour's noble health. I heard him then, for I had just completed my design to keep the men I bridge from rust by boiling it in wine. I thanked him much for telling me the way he got his wealth, but chiefly for his wish that he might drink my noble health. And now, if e'er by chance I put my fingers into glue, or madly squeeze a right-hand foot into a left-hand shoe, or if I drop upon my toe a very heavy weight, I weep. For it reminds me so of that old man I used to know, whose look was mild, whose speech was slow, whose hair was whiter than the snow, whose face was very like a crow, with eyes like cinders all aglow, who seemed distracted with his woe, who rocked his body to and fro and muttered mumblingly and low, as if his mouth were full of dough, who snorted like a buffalo that summer evening long ago, a sitting on. You've only a few yards to go now, down the hill, across the little brook, and then you'll be a queen. But uh, you'll stay and see me off first. I, I, I shan't be long. Mm. Uh, wave your handkerchief to me when I get to that turn in the road. It'll comfort me. Of course I'll wait. Thank you very much for coming so far. And for the song. I liked it very much. I hope so. But you didn't cry as much as I thought you would. It won't take long to see him off, I expect. There he goes. Right on his head, as usual. Is it 
gets on pretty easily, though. That comes of having so many things hung round the horse. And again. I wonder what he'd be like if he hadn't had plenty of practice. There. I hope it encouraged him. Now for the last brook, and to be a queen. Eighth square at last. Now what happens? Well, I never expected I should be a queen so soon. I shall be able to manage it quite well in time. Please, would you tell me... You speak when you're spoken to. But if everybody obeyed that drawing and the other person always waited for you to begin, nobody would ever say anything. So oh, ridiculous. Why don't you see, child? What do you mean by, if you really are a queen? What right have you to call yourself so? You can't be a queen, you know, till you pass the proper examination, and the sooner we begin it, the better. I only said if. She says she only said if. Oh, but she said a great deal more than that. She said ever so much more than that. So you did, you know. Always speak the truth. Think before you speak and write it down afterwards. I'm sure I didn't mean to offend But that's just you. what I complain of. You should have meant. What do you suppose is the use of a child without any meaning? Even a joke should have some meaning. And a child is more important than a joke, I hope. You couldn't deny that even if you tried with both hands. I don't deny things with my hands. Nobody said you did. I said you couldn't if you tried. But she's in that state of mind where she wants to deny something, only she doesn't know what to deny. A nasty, vicious temper. I invite you to Alice's dinner party this afternoon. And I invite you. I didn't know I was to have a party at all. But if there is to be one, I think I ought to invite the guests. We just gave you the opportunity. But I dare say you haven't had many lessons in manners yet. Manners aren't taught in lessons. Lessons teach you to do sums and things of that sort. Can you do addition? What's one and 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 one? I don't know. I lost count. She can't do addition. Can you do subtraction? Take nine from eight. I can't. Nine from eight won't. She can't do subtraction. Can you do division? Divide a loaf by a knife. What is the answer to that? I suppose... Oh, bread and butter, of course. She, she can't, can't do, do sums, sums a bit. Can you do sums? <gasps> I can do addition, if you give me time. But I can't do subtraction, not under any circumstances. Of course you know your A, B, C. To be sure I do. So do I. We'll read it over together often, dear. And I'll tell you a secret. I can read words of one letter. <laughs> Isn't that grand? But don't be discouraged. You'll come to it in time. Stand her head. She'll be feverish after so much thinking. Oh, please stop that, please. She's all right again now. Do you know languages? What's the French for fiddle de dee? Fiddle dee is not English. Whoever said it was. If you'll tell me what language fiddle dee is, I'll tell you the French for it. Queens never make bargains. I wish queens never ask questions. Oh, don't let us quarrel. What is the cause of lightning? The cause of lightning is the thunder. No, no, I meant the other way. It's too late to correct it. When you once said a thing, that settles it. And you must take the consequences. Oh, I'm so sleepy. She's tired, poor thing. Smooth her hair. Lend her your nightcap and sing her a soothing lullaby. I haven't got a nightcap with me. And I don't know any soothing lullabies. I shall do it myself, then. hush a lady in Alice's lap. Till the feast's ready, we've time for a nap. When the feast's over, we'll go to the ball. Red Queen and White Queen and Alice and all. I'm tired now. What am I to do? I don't think it ever happened before that anyone had to take care of two queens asleep at once. 
Oh, do wake up, you heavy things. I'll wait till the song's over, then I'll ring the... the... Which bell must I ring? I'm not a visitor, and I'm not a servant. There ought to be one marked Queen. No bits till the week after next. Uh, 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 what is it now? Where's the servant whose business it is to answer the door? Which door? This door, of course. To answer the door? What's it been asking of? I don't know what you mean. I speak English, doesn't I? Or are you deaf? What did it ask you? Nothing. I've been knocking at it. Shouldn't do that. Ah, shouldn't do that. It vexes it, you know. You let it alone. It'll let you alone. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, uh. times nine. <laughs> It'll never be done. I'd better go in quick. They've all come without waiting to be asked. I should never have known who the right people to invite. You missed the soup and fish. Put on the joint! You look a little shy. Let me introduce you to that leg of mutton. Alice, mutton. Mutton, Alice. May I give you a slice? Certainly not. It isn't etiquette to cut anyone you've been introduced to. Remove the joint! Oh. Oh. I won't be introduced to the pudding, please, or she'll get no dinner at all. May I give you some? Pudding, Alice. Alice, pudding. Remove the pudding. Waiter, bring back the pudding. What impertinence! I wonder how you would like it if I was to cut a slice out of you. You creature! <laughs> well, make a remark. It's ridiculous to leave all the conversation to the pudding. Do you know, I've had such a quantity of... We'll drink your health. Queen Alice's health! Queen Alice's health! <laughs> you ought to return thanks in a neat speech. We must support you, you know. Very much, but I can do quite well without. That wouldn't be at all the thing. I rise to return thanks. Take care, something's going to happen. Such a nice dream. Sit up a little more stiffly and curtsy while you're thinking what to what 
to purr. That's who you turned into, Kitty. That's who you turned into, Snowdrop. You're both with me all through the looking glass world. Who really dreamed it all? You or I? You were part of my dream, but I was part of your dream too. So who really dreamed it all? Why you did, you silly thing. Come on, I'll wait for you in the garden. Boat beneath the sunny sky, lingering onward dreamily in an evening of July. Children three that nestled near, eager eye and willing ear, pleased a simple tale to hear. Long has paled that sunny sky, echoes fade and memories die. Autumn frosts have slain July. Still she haunts me, phantom wise. Alice moving under skies never seen by waking eyes. Children yet the tale to hear, eager eye and willing ear, lovingly shall nestle near. In a wonderland they lie, dreaming as the days go by, dreaming as the summers die. Ever drifting down the stream, lingering in the golden gleam, life, what is it? but a dream.